presenting the PR Maven podcast, hosted by Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven. Targeted at business leaders who want to merge the best techniques of traditional networking with the best new platforms and technologies to engage your target audience, build your network, and grow your brand and business. The podcast is sponsored by Marshall Communications, Maine-based, globally connected. Now, here's your host, Nancy Marshall. Hello, PR Maven Nation. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, episode number 26. I can't believe we're already at episode 26. It's very exciting. Presented by Marshall Communications, creator of the Marshall Plan 65-Step Strategic Process. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm your host, Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I want to welcome you. For those of you who are new to the show, thank you for joining us. And for those of you who have been here all along, I want to thank you for your loyalty. That means the world to me. This podcast provides my unique perspective on the world of public relations and personal branding, including what I hope will be actionable takeaways. I believe in the importance of enhancing traditional relationship building with the power of today's new technology. And every week, this podcast features interviews with successful industry leaders, top executives, and media personalities from around the globe. And this week's guest is no exception. I'm very pleased and proud to present Whitney Raymond, who is an account supervisor at Marshall Communications And she reminds me that she has now been with Marshall Communications for seven and a half years. Thanks for joining me today, Whitney. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here and to finally see the behind the scenes of the podcast. That's right. Yeah, all the magic that happens with Greg Glynn, our producer. And he's got his iPad in his hands and he's got his headphones and he's watching the little lines go up and down every time I say something. It goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. He doesn't mess around. We're in good hands. (laughs) Yes, and as I get more and more excited, the whoop, whoop, whoop goes more up and down. I don't, that's probably not the correct term. It's a good visual, though. I like that. (laughs) Hopefully you can imagine. (laughs) Okay, so to get back on track, because Greg's got the timer going. He's going to start, like, he's going to get out the cane in a minute and pull me off my chair. (laughs) So Whitney Raymond loves Maine and enjoys representing the state of Maine in her role as international marketing representative for the Maine Office of Tourism, which is our largest client. Her enthusiasm has endeared her to the tour operators and travel agents that she works with. That is just one of the hats that she wears, however. She's responsible for the strategic public relations and marketing efforts for her clients including everything from strategic planning to social media marketing and copywriting. Loving the fast-paced PR and marketing field, Whitney does everything in her power to best serve clients, ranging from nonprofits to the tourism industry. Social media marketing is also a key part of her work at Marshall Communications, and she regularly presents to Maine-based businesses and organizations on best social media practices, tips, and trends. And that's certainly a relevant part of this podcast because we talk a lot about the combination of traditional relationship building with the power of social media. So Whitney, to kick things off, tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place. Okay, well, I think from pretty early on, I, I knew, you know, about my freshman or sophomore year in high school, I really figured out that I wanted to pursue a college career in something that I felt was really creative and exciting and for me that was marketing so I did I went to school for marketing management uh, and while I was in school which is Thomas in in Waterville Maine I also took a PR class which I found that I loved equally as much which was really fun for me Uh, I hadn't really been exposed to too much of it before then but I really I really thought yeah this is this is exactly what I want to do so I landed an awesome internship at Kennebec Savings Bank in the marketing department, and that's just a central main base community bank. And, and one of our clients. And one now. of our clients, <laughs> yes. And they really embraced me. I, I didn't feel like an intern there. I really didn't. I felt like 
they took me in as an employee and I learned a lot of really great things uh, while I was interning there. They let me do everything from drafting press releases to helping them conceptualize their annual report theme for the coming year. So uh, it was an awesome experience um, and after an extended internship there, I briefly worked at a local real estate firm and then I came here and here I am seven and a half years later. Unbelievable. So, I can still remember when I you know. came in that first time. I remember what I was wearing for my interview. <laughs> I know all. Yeah, I remember everything. <laughs> and so. you and I have a lot in common. Not only do we both have MBAs from Thomas College, yes, but I think we both enjoyed playing school as children. <laughs> right? As Did we girls. ever. <laughs> And I think ever. both of us probably were the teacher most of the time. I was only the teacher, and I'm an, I'm an only child, so I had invisible students. And, yeah, I enjoyed doing that very much. Worksheets yep. and, yeah. All yep. kinds of things. We, but we also both love office supplies. Uh, papers and pretty pencils and pens. All of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think that that's kind of a trait of a successful PR person, as you like working with files and writing materials and of course there's the online piece that's important too but having your desk set up just so and we're in Greg's office where he has everything set up just so also great example <laughs> yeah he is everything has a home <laughs> yes it does even the pen that he put for me on his bulletin board so I could just grab it when he knows I'm going to need a pen I love during it. these interviews <laughs> So Whitney, if you had it to do over again, what would you do differently? Well, I, I know this might not be the most exciting of answers, but I, I think that everything that I've done, even if there were missteps and challenges along the way, I really feel like it taught me lessons that I needed to be taught and uh, only benefited me. I will say because I do so much work for the Office of Tourism that I wish I had learned to love Maine sooner. Uh, you know, in high school, I really, I really wanted to kind of get out of here. I thought I wanted to be in the Boston area. I went to Endicott for my freshman year in Beverly, Mass. It was a great place, but I felt like I needed to come home, and, and I did. And once I worked here and started working for the Office of Tourism, and as I was getting a bit older, I was able to do my own sort of exploring that I hadn't done before. You know, my parents, I grew up here in Maine, but and they always took me to do these really fun things throughout the state. But as I said, as I've, I've gotten older, I was able to explore the things that I wanted to. Um, and I just really love Maine. I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to travel to some really amazing places and I think there is no place on earth like like here so mm -hmm. I I wish I had known that sooner yeah and well and you're so enthusiastic about it and actually that helps you when you travel to amazing places like you've been throughout Europe and you've been to New Zealand yeah and throughout the United States again representing Maine and of course my whole philosophy about PR is if you can be enthusiastic about your clients, then you can better represent them. It definitely helps to actually love Maine and to to be well versed and well traveled in it because, um, it like you said, it, it shows when someone really loves something. It That's comes right. across. So and travel journalists do like to speak to somebody on the other end of the phone who actually has been to Acadia National Park or been to Mount Katahdin or Moosehead Lake or exactly Sebago or Rangeley mm -hmm. or any of the amazing places that we have. Exactly, and not just, you know, being there, but actually the specific things you can do once you're there. That's um, right. So, that's yeah, and I know fun. you're a big outdoor adventurer. You've hiked a lot of mountains with your yeah. dad. Yes. That's I, another thing we have in common because I used to do a lot of hiking with my dad too. Yes, I know you had said when I did Katahdin last year that that was something you did with your dad. So that was a pretty awesome experience. Yes, yeah, and an that. awesome mountain that I will not be climbing <laughs> again soon. I know. Maybe again in I the know. future, but not oh, in when the I'm very the, near future. When I'm on the stair climber at the YMCA, I'm always thinking, "Oh yeah, I would like to do Katahdin one more time." So I got to keep <laughs> practicing. Yeah, it's worth it. I think. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh! But yeah, you're a little sore the day after. A little. <laughs> for, I was for out a for a week. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm right. just kidding. <laughs> 
Can you give me an example of how PR and social media have helped to advance you personally or your organization or a client? Yeah, so I, I tend to think of, about Instagram when I think of this question because working with the main office of tourism, we do handle their social media and it's really, it's really changed so much since I started working. I mean, we used to rely pretty heavily on, on Facebook and we, we still do, but it's really allowed us to take our social media to a whole new level because it's such a visual platform and we're able to showcase how amazingly beautiful Maine is. So um, that's one of the things I always think of. Yes, so Instagram. And yeah, of course, when seven and a half years ago, I don't even know had Instagram been invented yet. <laughs> no, and you know what? It's changed even more in the last few years because we've started tapping into user-generated images. Right. And Megan, who in our office manages the social media account for the main office of tourism, uh, when she started using those types of images, places in Maine that we don't necessarily have assets of, and activities that we don't normally feature, it really opened up our network and grew our following enormously. So if, if listeners want to see what you're doing, they would look at what hashtag or how would they see our Instagram? Yes, yeah, so definitely. Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, Visit Maine is the handle for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we always use the hashtag Maine thing. Right. Um, so one of the ways that we started using the user-generated images is by encouraging followers to hashtag main thing and give us permission to repost, and we do tag them. So, so if any of our listeners in PR Maven Nation want to have their photos showcased, or yes. videos too, right? Yes, videos too. What do they do? They would just uh, post their photo and hashtag main thing, and we'll, we'll be able to see it then, and, you know, it might get mixed up in the schedule. That's right, yeah. Actually, I think that's a really great way for brands to grow their following is to to recognize when somebody is, you know, to be following social media and recognize when someone is posting photos from your location exactly. or your brand. And what's nice about it is we've started using the user-generated images on the other channels too. The way Facebook's algorithm has changed so much in the last few years and so frequently, we found that images really are what's, you know, performing the best for us. So I'll actually use the images that Megan posts on Instagram, on Facebook, and I make sure to just call out that they were, you know, taken from Instagram. And right. I still do the appropriate tagging. So that's an, another way that we're using the images. Yeah. Well, somebody who I love to follow on Facebook and I think is just amazing is Tim Cotton from the Bangor Police Department. Oh, my gosh. And, of course, he uses a lot of words. I mean, he posts, like, these really long stories and words, but he still gets a huge following. I mean, people, people read, read it. it. Yeah, oh, it's totally. Really re it's, and I have heard him speak, and he says he doesn't, you know, he doesn't go to seminars to learn more about Facebook. He just does it, and people have just become incredibly loyal to him. So. Very authentic way of doing social media. I really like that. Yeah, actually, I have to say, I've heard him speak, and I think he is so awesome, and he, I've told him that when he retires, I want him to come work at Marshall Communications, oh, he's, and he said he would like to, so we have that to look forward to, having him join our cool team. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's We'd like it. pretty cool dude. Hope you're retiring soon. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for listening, Tim Cotton. <laughs> We're going to have to tag you, so you <laughs> tune in and join PR Maven Nation. <laughs> So, Whitney, I know that PR, marketing, and certainly social media have changed drastically over the course of my career. What techniques are you using now that you're not using when you started out? Of course, we already touched on that a bit. Yeah, so Instagram is one of them, but the other thing that comes to mind, and not that it was not important seven and a half years ago, because it very much was, but reporting. I think that it's just become even more important. I mean, we we do all sorts of things to make sure that we're tracking media results and 
we're monitoring everything from Google Alerts, which anyone can have, to monitoring through our media database, Meltwater. So we're, it allows us to track all sorts of numbers, like readership and social shares. And I mean, that's something that we take very seriously here, I think. So um, that's one of the things that I thought of right away um, was reporting and, and showing the numbers and measuring. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, I, I remember from very early in my career, you know, I always thought it was so hard to measure PR, but it's so easy to do a lot of stuff, be really mm -hmm. busy, but mm -hmm. really have no idea uh, where it's getting you. And of course, that's part of why we created the Marshall Plan. Exactly. And uh, you're going to hear more about that in a moment when we hear our commercial break from <laughs> the Marshall Plan. <laughs> but before we go to our commercial break, um, what are some of the obstacles to success in your career and how have you overcome them? Okay, well, I'd, I'm not sure that I call it an obstacle. I call it a positive challenge. But I would say that just because this field changes so much that we have to stay on top of it. So it's ongoing education. It's knowing what's going on in not only the world, but also in terms of PR and marketing and social media. And I think that's one thing that's just going to continue forever. And we just have to embrace it and stay on top of it. I agree. You know, I don't think anybody in any career really can afford to just be stagnant and say, oh, I know everything, and especially in our career. And, but one thing that I have found is having your network of contacts will help you in good times and in bad. And being able to call on whether that's media people or other people in the industry is really helpful. Absolutely. We've yeah. seen that yeah. many times. And that's what I call, you know, building your network is building your brand, whether it's the brand of our mm -hmm. agency or your personal brand. I agree. Yeah. And of course, you're known internationally in the tourism industry. Well, that's a very nice thing to say. <laughs> I would, uh, that's, yeah, I, I would like to say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been very exciting being able to travel and talk about how much I love Maine internationally. And uh, one of the cool things is that I now have, you know, friends and colleagues that are literally all over the world. So, um, and social media to tie it all in is how I stay in touch with these people. So, yeah. I love that about it too. And you got married last summer, so all those people were able to see your beautiful they wedding were. photos. They were, yes. And I'm sure they were all so happy for you. They did. I got lots of nice emails and comments from them so yeah and of course you got married in a beautiful place in maine bar harbor well, thank you it is <laughs> one of my favorites yeah. yes and it was earlier enough in the year where it's still a little bit quiet and the town is still waking up a bit and um it was beautiful it was lovely yes it was yeah. indeed. thank you <laughs> okay well we're going to continue in a moment with whitney raymond but first it's time for our book and things to do pad giveaway now i know again whitney's persona and my persona we love those pads of paper with those checklists so if you're like us you definitely want to go and, and enter for this weekly drawing um, not only will you get the checklist to, or the things to do pad you're going to get a copy of my book pr works so to enter the weekly drawing go to prmaven.com giveaway and this is presented this giveaway in the podcast is presented by Marshall Communications, creator of the 65-step Marshall Plan strategic process. So uh, to learn more about the Marshall Plan, visit marshallpr.com. And we will be back in just a moment with more from Whitney Raymond. Hey, PR Maven Nation. Greg here from Marshall Communications. I want to talk about your marketing strategy. Some days, do you feel like you're a hamster running in a wheel? Perhaps you're just running the same ad in the same publication because that's the way you've always done it. Or do you not even know how many media impressions you got from that news story last month? Do you feel like sometimes you're doing a lot of work but not seeing the results? Well, the good news is you're not a hamster. And if you're feeling like your marketing plan could be better, we would love to help. At Marshall Communications, we've worked with a wide range of businesses and organizations to create a customized marketing strategy known as the Marshall Plan. During a period of three months, we meet with you and your top stakeholders to learn about your world, what keeps you up at night, and best of all, 
the ways we can work together to combine your knowledge and our marketing and public relations experience to avoid the feeling of spinning in a wheel and create a three-year marketing plan that provides you with a vision for success. The Marshall Plan is fully customized and uses our 65 proprietary steps and leads to a playbook for your success. And trust me, it feels so much better than running around in a wheel. Now, it's a great time to get your business going, grow your business, increase your profits, and most importantly, measure your results. If you think your business or organization would be a candidate for a Marshall Plan, you can take our Marshall Plan quiz to find out. Visit marshallpr.com slash quiz. And if you'd like to schedule a free consultation about a Marshall Plan, visit marshallpr.com slash consult or call us at 207-623-4177. Be sure to mention the code PODCAST for your free gift. Welcome back, and today on the PR Maven podcast, we're talking with Whitney Raymond, Account Supervisor at Marshall Communications, and I want to dive right back in with some more questions that I know that PR Maven Nation is interested in hearing about. Of course, we've been talking about the Marshall Plan, and one of the features of the Marshall Plan is a measurement dashboard, and Whitney talked earlier about how important it is to establish metrics to gauge your success with social media, but I want to talk to Whitney now, just how overall do you measure success in PR, social media, and marketing? So I think one of the things that we do well at Marshall Communications is that we do lots of tracking and reporting and analyzing results. So I think that's something we, like I said before, we we take really seriously. So for me, you know, in some of the a lot of the clients that I work with and what I do in terms of social, the biggest thing that we're looking at is engagement. So while we look at impressions and reach, we're really focusing on uh, engagement, especially for the, the social channels for Visit Maine. Uh, so that's one thing that we, we hold higher than, than other items. And then for other media results, we look at everything from mentions to links back to the website to shares on social there's you know it really depends on what's important to the client and those items happen to be you know most important to the main office of tourism for what we do in terms of social and media relations well when you think about it i mean people usually have a limited budget you know there's hardly any businesses out there that have just unlimited budgets unless you're like McDonald's or <laughs> Nike or <laughs> something like yeah. that but most normal organizations whether it's nonprofit or for profit ha- profit have a limited budget and they have to know what's going to deliver the best return on investment and we have found over the years that PR can deliver a great return on investment but it is really important that we provide that measurement so that they can say, wow, this really worked. And maybe next year we should spend some more on that because exactly. that really helped us. So, And also, we are, we're measuring different, you know, the uh, Instagram versus Twitter versus Facebook versus other social channels. Mm-hmm. And as you said, engagement is really important because someone could have thousands and thousands of fans or followers, but nobody ever likes anything or comments or shares. Yeah. So I think it's almost better to have fewer people following and friending and and but those people comment on everything exactly and I was just talking last week to Charlene and we were talking about how how important and meaningful shares are because you're not just commenting you're not just saying oh I like this or tagging a friend that you'd like to see it you're also you're also sharing it to your followers enough you liked it so much that you're allowing all of your fans and followers to see it too and uh, that is meaningful and we definitely hold a lot of weight for that as well well in a way that's almost the premise of a podcast too is that um, you know I am sharing my network of listeners with the guests that I'm interviewing and then in turn I hope they'll share the podcast with their network so you grow your exactly. network the more you're able to tap into mm-hmm. other networks. So that's true. That's exactly that's the same. Of, of, similar concept. Yeah, yeah. The secret of success in marketing. 
That's right. <laughs> and Whitney mentioned Charlene Williams, who's the president here at Marshall Communications, and she was the guest in episode number 12, if you want to listen to that one. Yes. She had a lot of pearls of wisdom. She has, yeah, taught me a lot about what I know in this agency, as well as in terms of working for the main office of tourism. So that's well, You mentioned been the fun. importance of lifelong learning and being curious. I mean, she is the example in the dictionary <laughs> next to lifelong learning because from the moment I met Charlene Williams, you know, you throw out any term or whatever, even if she doesn't know what it is. She's going to figure it out. Yeah, she'll go home that night. She, she's an expert by the next Stay day. Stay tuned. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think it's because she's really competitive, <laughs> <laughs> and she wants to know everything. That's so. a good quality to have then, I guess, it right? It is, yeah. Yeah, it is a very good quality. <laughs> so most successful people have a network of fans and followers, either online or in person or both. Tell me how you have built your network of fans and followers, and has it been a conscious goal, or has it just happened on its own? Okay, so I think for me it really has happened on its own, and I know we touched about it, touched on it a few minutes ago. We, we talked about how I do get to travel internationally sometimes for Maine. Uh, I, I visit our our top international markets that we've identified, and I get to talk about how much I love the state. And I have met with hundreds and hundreds of people to talk about Maine and, you know, developed these sort of relationships with them. But I also have relationships with our representatives that we have overseas. And that just sort of happened naturally. Like, what better way to get to know someone than, than being in a show with 15,000 people and talking to 200 people a day and you get to know someone, someone really fast. So I think of all those people and how I've grown my network that way. And then I also think about working here for the past seven and a half years and the hundreds of people I've met through you or Charlene and my other colleagues and our partners. And I just think about the multiplier effect. Like it just, it just keeps going. And um, yeah, I think it's happened naturally that way. It hasn't really been a conscious effort on my part. It's just happened. But I know you're active on LinkedIn. Yeah. So you do grow your network through that sure. too. Sure. So. Yeah. That's a good professional network to be on and, and grow it that way. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, your Thomas College alumni network. You know, you have people that you went to school exactly. with and other alums that good examples <laughs> I clearly should have thought of those too <laughs> I actually this is another kind of nerdy thing that I've done at home <laughs> is created a network map you know I put myself in the middle and then like I made a circle for all the different networks yes. that are important in my um, life so all the people that I know from Marshall Communications but I belong to the Women's Presidents Organization, and I belong to the Society of American Travel Writers. And, and you're part of a book club. Exactly. Yeah, like things like that. All those little right. circles. So all of my relatives. I have a lot of cousins, aunts and uncles. And so they're, you know, they're a piece, an important piece of my network. And I just think it's interesting to think of yourself and all those networks that are, that are part of your life. And for you, there must be a lot of overlap between yeah. the different circles of the web exactly so that's right. kind of interesting too yeah <laughs> and of course because i yeah i have a hard time separating my personal life from professional because anybody who's my friend knows that i'm usually talking about my <laughs> business and sometimes at our staff meetings i'm talking about my cousins or my cleaning friend. out your storage <laughs> exactly. unit it's been a big theme in my life lately and my friend joanne is a hero because she helped me clean <laughs> Spent the whole day after Thanksgiving. You're a wonderful cousin, Joanne. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's my cousin, Phyllis. Oh, she Phyllis. She did it in October. Okay. And then Joanne is my friend from Nova Scotia. So, yeah, I've really... Repeat cleaners. A, I love it. Yeah, right? So maybe I should just put my storage unit at the center and then all the people around who have helped me with my storage. Because I, I have a hard time throwing away things. It's like, especially pictures. I have so many photographs. You've come a long way. Yeah. I know. And sometimes you bring it into us at the office and we use it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. It's very nice. Oh, gosh. Actually, my friend Joanne has a lot of shoes. It's size seven and a half. What size feet do you have? Seven and a half. 
There we go. <laughs> Joanne has a lot of nice shoes. She does. <laughs> so I'm getting like, hooked up on the podcast. <laughs> right, I love right, it. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in building your network, which hurdles did you personally face and how did you overcome them? I will say that I don't really love stepping in a room full of people that I don't know and initiating conversation. Uh, it kind of surprises people because I'm generally pretty talkative um, and fairly outgoing most of the time. Um, but it doesn't take me long to get to know someone once the conversation is started. And it's just, you know, the best advice I have ever been given on this topic was from you, Nancy. And you always tell people to ask other people questions. And surprise, people love talking about themselves. So that's worked out very well for me. And it's worked out while I've traveled internationally. I've, I've used it. So just ask people questions. I love it. And you know, that comes from my mother, who everyone knows as Oma. And she gave me that, that um, advice early on in my career. She said, if you, and actually she does this too, if you just ask people and then you listen to them, they love talking about themselves. And if you really listen intently and remember, people will love you, even if you don't even say a word other than, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> the remembering thing is a good, I have a good memory, so that's that's benefited me too. If you remember a little tidbit about someone, it flatters the heck out of yes, them. Yes, it does. It does, so. and they will love you even mm -hmm. more. <laughs> it's true. So um, how has your network helped you to advance your career? I think we all, you know, talk about, you know, say the saying, it's a small world, but uh, we, we here seem to say it's a small state. And really, the people that you run into, chances are your paths are going to cross again down the road, if, if not in a week or two, in a couple years. So I just think building positive relationships with people is, is key. I, I just think it can only benefit you down the road. And there are lots of people that you'll find you circle back with over time. So I just... I think that's one of the the key things. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, one of my famous sayings is, if you're good, everyone will know about it. And if you're bad, everyone will know about it. So you might as well be good. That's exactly right. In the and state of Maine, there's few le levels of separation. And I think, of, you know, depending on what who your, your networks are and who are the people that they're made up with. I think that, you know, so here I am at Marshall Communications. My network has grown just naturally through working here. And I think that I have built, you know, relationships over time through, through working here. And you start to get kind of recognized on your own as well. I'm not just an employee of Marshall Communications. They start to recognize your name and they start respecting you as a professional person so I think that has always taking advantage of and tapping into the networks that you're part of is always beneficial yeah I, I, I like to think of it as like leveraging your network exactly yeah mm -hmm. and you know I am always trying to find out if people in my networks need our services and tapping into that too or um, you know, I also belong to this Agency Management Institute, and I think that that network has helped all of us, basically. So Definitely. We've been yeah. able to find out, because it's a national network of agencies, so if somebody else is dealing with a client or a challenge similar, we can tap those people. Yeah, we've definitely tapped them in a lot of different ways that I think have only helped us. So That's right, exactly. So... What would be your one piece of advice for someone starting their career, Whitney? I would say keep going. Don't, don't get fed up with day-to-day -day frustrations, whether it's uh, a difficult conversation that you have with a client or you're um, not seeing, uh, and not in a bad way, but not seeing eye-to-eye -eye with a coworker, whatever it may be, don't get fed up and just keep going, do your best work, work hard, and it will pay off. If you like what you're doing, just push through. Yeah. 
Because there are days when it is really hard. I mean, that's why they call it work. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and it's not all fun. I remember we did have an employee here at one point who quit after the first week because he said he thought it would be more Disney-esque. Well, and I was thinking, oh, yeah, did you expect me to have Mickey there to greet you when you came in the door? We're all walking around with chicken legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really amazing. I think he thought that he would be just entertained. <laughs> I don't know. I should have recommended that he become a mascot, like go work at Sugarloaf and be Amos the Moose. Yes. <laughs> that would be disney yes. Right. <laughs> so what is one parting thought you would like to share with our audience? I think it's important to have fun while you're working hard. I think it's really important to be professional, but don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun while you're doing it. I think that's something I try to live by on the day to day. Yeah, I'm glad. Yep. I, I believe in that too, that we need to take our clients seriously and especially that the responsibility that they've of course, placed yeah. with us. But yeah, I mean, people are drawn to people who are happy and mm -hmm. smiling and successful. And so I think uh, you know, if if we are act in that way, we're going to draw more clients and more media people. So I think so too. Yeah. So uh, our final question is to help PR Maven Nation connect with you. What are some of the best ways our listeners can get in touch with you? You can definitely find me on LinkedIn, and you can always email me. I mean, that's a great way to get in touch with me too. It's W Raymond at marshallpr.com. Great. Well, Whitney, this has been a lot of fun. I want to thank you for joining us. And if anyone has any questions for our guests that I can help with, or if you want to make a suggestion on a future guest, just email me at nancy at prmaven.com. And this podcast is presented by Marshall Communications, the creator of the 65-step Marshall Plan strategic process. And to learn more about the Marshall Plan, go to uh, marshallpr.com and you can check out our Marshall Communications webinar series at marshallpr.com slash webinars and I want to thank you for tuning in today to the PR Maven podcast. We have a new episode coming out every single week and already we are ep at episode 26 which is just like amazing to me. That's half a year that we've already covered um, and we're having a lot of fun doing this so I want to thank you for, for joining us and remember to go keep on building those relationships, both traditional and using new technology to supplement those face-to-face -face meetings. And I hope you have a great week, PR Maven Nation. Thank you for joining us on the PR Maven podcast. For show notes, links, contact information on our guests, and way to connect with Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven, go to prmaven.com. Subscribe, like, and share to support this podcast and bring on more great info on how to connect, build your network, and build your brand.